morning class today we are going to do grammar lesson number 19 more kinds of pronouns we will be doing page number 259 260 261 and 263 from the journey's notebook let's begin with the lesson what are indefinite pronouns an indefinite pronoun takes the place of a noun it refers to people places and objects that are not specific for example anyone anywhere anything nothing nowhere no one they're not specific at all now in this table you can see three columns here with people places and things pronouns ending with o n e one or b o d y body are used to refer to people for example anyone anybody everyone everybody no one, nobody. Someone, somebody. Similarly, if the pronoun ends with where, W-H-E-R-E, -E, it's used to refer to places. For example, anywhere, everywhere, nowhere, somewhere. And see, then none of these are specific. They're not telling you specific places. Similarly, with things, pronouns ending with THING thing are used to refer to thing for example anything everything nothing something now let me give you some examples of um, these pronouns into sentences make these uh, make sentences of these pronouns for example if I want to make a sentence for anyone I won't tell anyone or secret similarly if I want to make a sentence for anything Anything is possible if you believe. If I want to make a sentence for everyone, everyone cheered for the musician. Everything, everything is going as planned. Moving on, these are some of the indefinite pronouns that are listed. Some of them can be used as singular, the others are used as plural, and there are some which can be used as singular or plural depending on the sentence you have the singular ones we discuss some of them another anybody anyone anything each either everybody everyone everything and so on there's there are lots and other there are lots of others that can be used as singular indefinite pronouns if i talk about the plural ones both few many others several whereas there are some that can also be used as singular or plural. For example, all, any, more, most, none, some, such. They can be used both as singular and plural. For example, let me give you an example of some as a singular as well as a plural. If I use some, as singular, I can say some of the salad has been eaten. Remember, I'm saying some of the salad has been eaten, which means has is used for singular. If I want to use it as a plural, I can say some of us have never ridden bicycle before. Here, I'm saying some of us have, which means I'm using it as a plural. Moving on. We need to understand what is a subject verb agreement before we move on to the activity. Now, on the right hand side, it says the subject of a sentence is who or what a sentence is about. The verb is the action in the sentence. The subject and the verb must work together to agree. This makes the sentence sound good. There are two rules to this. Number one, if the noun is singular, then you add S to the verb for example the girl is singular remember here the girl jumps rope at recess jumps is a verb where we are adding an s to it here as you can see now rule number two if the noun is plural then the verb has no s at the end for example the girls jump rope at recess so the girls is a plural noun that's why the verb 
does not have an S. It says jump rope at recess. There are two exceptions. I and you are the exception. I and you are both singular object, subjects. When you use them, you don't add an S to the end of the verb. I jump rope at recess. You jump rope at recess. Simple. There are two other examples that I have written on the left. Everything looks great. Everything is considered as singular. Everyone is happy. This is also considered as singular. Moving on. Move on to page number 259 and let's do activity. Circle the correct pronoun for each sentence. Let's look at the first one. All or every of us wanted to go swimming this summer. Every of us does not sound correct. All of us wanted to go swimming this summer. So the correct answer is all. Moving on. However, someone something decided to close the city pool. It has to be someone because someone decided to close the city pool. It cannot be something decided to close the city pool. So the correct answer is someone decided to close the city pool. We asked if nobody or anyone on the city council could reopen the pool. We asked if anyone on the city council could reopen the pool. Okay. Now remember sentence number 1 to 8 is a single story that they have written in uh, sentences. So you can make a connection. Okay. All of these are connected. The council members said that there was everything, nothing that they could do. What did they say? They say that there was nothing that they could do. So the correct answer is nothing. We decided to search for someone somewhere else to go swimming. We decided to search for somewhere else to go to swim to go swimming. Number six. Everyone or everything looked for another place. Everything looked for another place doesn't sound correct. Everyone looked for another place because they were searching for somewhere else to go to swimming. But we couldn't find everywhere anywhere to go. But we couldn't find everywhere to go. That doesn't sound correct. But we couldn't find anywhere to go. Which means there was no other place to go. So we decided to do something nothing else instead. So we decided to do something else instead. That's it. You're done with the first activity. Let's move on to the possessive pronoun. A possessive pronoun shows ownership. It tells you to what something belongs to or to whom something belongs to. Some take the place of nouns like mine, yours, its, ours, hers, his, theirs. Others come before a noun like my, your, her, his, its, our, their. For example, their house, you can also say the house is theirs. My book, the book is mine. Its color, the color is its. His car, the car is his. Now on the right, the table shows you the possessive pronouns with a noun and without a noun. With noun, it will be my. Without noun, mine. Your will convert to yours. His will remain the same in both the cases. Her, hers. Our, ours. Their, theirs. Its remain the same in both the cases. Its. Let's look at the exercise on page number 260. Before we move on to the exercise, let's look at the example on the table. Possessive pronouns. The speech was his and not hers. So there are two possessive pronouns here. His and hers. My friend came to the meeting. My is a possessive pronoun. Similarly, moving on, the first sentence is, The donation that helped start the shelter was mine. Here you have to underline the possessive pronoun, which is mine. Shepherd's pie is our, is our favorite dinner at the shelter and spaghetti is theirs. So there are two possessive pronouns here. Our and theirs. Those plates and cups are ours. The possessive pronoun is ours. 
This seat is yours if you want to join us. The possessive pronoun is yours. Joe's made the chicken and the salad was his too. The possessive pronoun here is his. So you underline his. Alice brought her sister with her tonight. The possessive pronoun is her. So you underline her. Number seven. I know this bag is mine because its zipper is broken. Here we have two possessive pronouns. Mine and its. Number eight. Sometimes people forget their hats or scarves when they leave. There is a possessive pronoun in the last sentence. Moving on, let's look at the interrogative pronoun. As the word suggests, it is used to ask questions like who, what, which. They can replace a person, place or thing in a question. Okay, for example, who will tell you, it's basically a question when you want to know the name of the person. It's about people. What can be about an animal, thing or an idea. Which can be for people, animal, things as well as it can show choice. It can help you choose between two things. For example, which of these books do you like? So they're asking you to choose between the two. Which is the tallest building? Here they're trying to pinpoint, they're trying to be specific. Which is the tallest building, let's say, in the world? Who won the first prize? They want you to name the person who won the first prize. That's an interrogative pronoun. Similarly, for what? What is the color of her eyes? They want you to name the color, the specific color. Okay. Moving on. We have exercise on page number 261. The first one. Dash wanted the flowers in the garden. Who wanted the who planted the flowers? Sorry. Dash planted the flowers in the garden. Who planted the flowers in the garden? Number two. Dash does she grow there? What does she grow there? Number three. Dash helped her take out the weed take all the weeds out. Who helped her take all the weeds out? They're asking, who is the person? Number four. Dash is the best time of the year to plant seeds. What is the best time of the year to plant seeds? Number five. Dash is the tallest plant you have ever grown. Now that's again a question asking, what is the tallest plant you have ever grown? Number six. Dash of these flowers does she like most? Now here they're giving a choice between the two. So which of these flowers does she like most? Okay. Number seven. Dash does she plan to grow next? The idea is what does she plan to grow next? So the possessed interrogative pronoun here is what? Number eight. Dash would like to help me start a vegetable garden. Who would like to help me start a vegetable garden? They want the name in the last one. Okay, in the end, you have to finish page number 263 on your own and then you can check the answers from here. I have uh, highlighted or they're, they're bold. The uh, pronouns are written in bold so that it's easy for you to uh, know the answers. I hope you have understood the lesson. If there is any question, you can ask the teacher. Have a good day. Goodbye.